Hi guys, I'm Ishan from FTC Live. Today we're going to be doing a Behind the Bots with Team 5040, Loveland Nuts and Bolts from Ohio. Um, they've got a pretty cool robot here, and one of the things that's really noticeable is their bent metal. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? So yeah, we made use of the Fusion 360 sheet metal tool to make a lot of our robot out of these uh, bent aluminum metal parts, which we designed first using that tool and then got it cut from one of our sponsors, which makes it a bit more sturdy than other methods and you know has allows us to get it exactly as we want it in a way that we couldn't probably do before. So what's the design process like when you're using bent metal? Is it like a very iterative or do you like just do it all in CAD and then end up creating your robot and that's what it is? So actually for this robot we spent a month or two in uh, CAD entirely designing this stuff and we went through, we would go through the parts and then we would change them as we needed them and made sure we go over them a couple times to make sure they're all like set up correctly. And then once we had it all together, once we had it all together in the CAD, we would get, uh, we would just send out the drawing files to our sponsor. They would cut them and then we got them back a week or two later and we just sort of assembled the robot and most of the parts haven't changed much since except for a few holes drilled here and there, but otherwise they haven't really changed. That's really cool. So I see a lot of orange, like really bright orange. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And we can move around the robot. Okay. Yeah. So the orange here is actually uh, all custom 3D, uh, 3D printed parts, which lets us get a lot more in depth on exactly what we want the design to be, especially with this bucket. If you look over there, that tub is actually all the iterations we had for that this scoring bucket. We went through a lot of them because there were always a, a few small things we wanted to tweak about it to try to make it as good as possible. And in the end, this is the best design we got before it was time to go to competition. But there are, probably are a few things we could make more efficient about it, but this is the best that we got. So then, yeah. So now I wanted to talk a little bit more about the software that you guys use. I heard that you're using unique driving enhancements. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so for the driving side of things, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. We have field-oriented using the um, built-in gyro on the expansion hubs, as well as we use different things such as the color sensor, and we run all of the motors off of encoders for lifting and pulling things out. So it's just press a button, and the scoring button will go all the way up to where it needs to go. Um, the transfer between it is automated with the color sensor to tell when this is pulled all the way back and lifted all the way up. It makes it a lot easier for the drivers to um, overall use. And I see that like even in autonomous you've got these really cool wheels that will allow you to move very accurately and very precise. Thank you very much for this interview and we'll see you guys next time. Good luck at the competition. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live and independent.